Greetings, AP Calculus AV students. Mr. Reggard here from Avon High School, and we are taking a look at a video that focuses on topic 1.8, determining limits using the squeeze theorem. And we're gonna look at example two from my curriculum package. And that example asks us to find the limit as X approaches zero of the sine of four X divided by four. Now on the previous page of my notes, uh, we have an array of four very special trig limits that you can see now on your screen. And it's these four limits that somehow form the building blocks of a lot of these trig limits that, that you can see throughout AP Calculus. So the thing to keep in mind here, what we want to keep in mind is that the limit of the sine of x over x as x approaches zero equals one can really take a lot of forms. In other words, the value of x can literally be anything. It can be any variable. It can be any idea. It can be any, oh, let's say weird blop. So let's say we have this weird purple blop right there in those three spaces. As long as the three things that occupy that purple blop are the same, then we can conceivably say that this limit is going to be one. Now I know that that purple blob doesn't make a lot of sense mathematically, but I want you just to kind of go with that for the, for, for the moment and realize that those three things just merely have to be equivalent. So if we revisit our original limit, we can see that we don't have that situation. We don't have these three ideas all being the same thing, but we can make that happen. And the way that we're going to initially make this happen is change one of them to match the other. Now, what do I mean by one of them? We have a 4x on top and we have an x on bottom. Well, what would be a lot easier to do is to change the x on the bottom so that it is a 4x. Well, you might ask, well, how do you do that? Well, you're going to multiply the bottom by 4. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't just go around doing that. That's going to change the value. Well, of course it will. So why don't we just multiply the top through by a four as well? And now you can see that these blops, right, highlighted in yellow are indeed the same, but whoa, not the same as this blop over here that's highlighted in blue. I need those to be the same color. Well, here's where things get a little weird but I think you can probably understand that we are allowed to simply multiply this X here by that same four, and it doesn't change the value. And so now I have all of these blops the same color. Okay, now wait a minute, why are we allowed to do that? Well, it's really pretty basic because if X is approaching zero, then Multiplying that x by virtually any constant will not change that fact. In fact, this arrow sort of acts like an equal sign. It has a lot of the same properties. So if that's the case down here, if I say that this arrow is acting like an equal sign down here, well, if we solve for x equal to 0 and divide by 4, we certainly get x equal to 0, and then that equal sign can retransform itself back to that arrow. And that's the part about this that is a little bit unusual. But I assure you that this limit is going to work the way that we want it to work. And at this point, what we notice is that this 4 can come out to the front and it can multiply by this limit. Okay. And now that we see that all of the components of this limit match what this particular limit is trying to say, then we know that this limit is going to have an answer of one. Of course, we multiply by the constant that we brought out in front because that is a limit property. We end up getting our answer of four. Now, you could certainly take a shortcut with problems like this. No matter what the numerator coefficient of x is going to be there, typically that is going to be the answer. If there happens to be a denominator that has a coefficient as well, then he is just going to factor out to the front. 
and for the sake of this problem that I just wrote, let's say that this is a brand new problem, the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of four x over three would really just equal four thirds. And you can make the problems that easy. All right, anyway, I hope this helps and we'll see you at the next video.